with our last stretch of the day, we're going to talk waterfall charts. Now, I want to make sure that you guys can all see this before I actually do it. So here is a waterfall chart. In a waterfall chart, we have a gray bar that represents how much money we started with and a gray bar that represents how much money we ended with. From that point, if we get some positive revenue, if we are making sales, that should be green bars that start from where you were previously and go up. And if we have out, uh, you know, outgoing expenses like rent and salaries and things like that, we should start from the top and go down with a red bar. Now we can make this happen because all of this, this data right here that you see, this is nothing more than a stacked bar chart. So we're going to start off with a stacked bar chart, but we have to create different columns for different sets of information. So for example here, we need to know in gray how much we started with and how much we ended with. We also need to know, notice uh, right here in my other one here, we also need to know how much down we're going and how much up we're going. And we need to know what the base value is. Okay, so I'll have my start and my end and my base value. I'll have my positive values and my negative values. All right, and uh, let's see here. Looking good. So we have net cash flow. We have the start value and the end value. Those are these two gray boxes here. And then this is something very interesting. This base, this column right here, this is representing how high up these columns need to start. This is why this is a stacked column chart, because this space right here, this is the base. And then we have negative values and we have positive values. All right, let's try this out. So the start value should be whatever amount of money we're starting with. And the ending value should be whatever amount of money we end with. Now, if we have positive cash flow, we want to put the $45,000 here. But if we have negative cash flow, we want to put the negative $5,000 here, and we want zero if there is no positive cash flow. So the way we do this is with a max function. We use the max function to say, take the maximum value between that $45,000 net cash flow and the number zero. Now in this situation, in the first row, that'll put in 45,000. But as I autofill this down, you'll see in some situations, it'll be negative, uh, positive 75,000, positive 25,000, positive 15,000. But anytime it's negative, you'll see a zero there. And the opposite goes for the negative box. We do equal sign, the min function between that value and zero. And then we see that these negative values go in here and basically the opposite, right? So $45,000 here, zero here. $5,000 here, zero here. $75,000 here, zero here. Now I'm de detailing how I do this, but you all have right now this sample file. So it's actually very simple for you to take the sample file, fill in your own information, and get a perfectly functioning waterfall chart. I highly recommend that you try that out. Okay, the last thing we do is we do the base. The base column is equal to the starting cash flow plus the previous base plus the positive cash flow minus the negative value. Zoop, just like that. Now, if we take all of these things and we highlight them, we can then insert that stacked column chart that we had before, just like this. Now you see what's happening here? Most of what we want is in there right now, but what is different? Well, 
first of all, any values that are positive, these yellow bars that go up, I want them to be green. So I'll select the yellow bars that go up and I will format them to be green. And these down bars that are currently blue, I want them to be red, like that. And I wanted it to start with a gray bar and end with a gray bar. And then this is the tricky part. I click on this base and the idea is that this should be invisible and it's actually easy to do. I click on my shape fill drop down menu and I tell it, don't put a fill in there. And that's it. That ladies and gentlemen is how you make a waterfall chart. You have here the base values in gray. You have the positive values in green, the negative values in red. And then these things that were the sort of jumping off point, these bases have become invisible. So what I did was I took an existing cash flow report right here and I blew it out into five columns. By putting it into five separate columns, I was able to have one column for a starting value, another column for an ending value, another column for the invisible part, another column for the green part, and another column for the red part. Now, like I said, I wanted to illustrate how that's done. This is one of those exercises that takes a lot of practice. And luckily for you guys, you guys all have the sample file that you can actually put your own dollar amounts in. You can try this out. And you can also see the screenshots in the handout to help walk you through this process.